Hi everyone, today we'll be covering a couple of hematology related approaches. We'll be covering anemia, easy bruisability, hypercoagulable states, uh, as well as a short bit on young stroke workup, uh, epistaxis, as well as uh, polycythemia. So let's begin with uh, anemia. So I think anemia is something that um, we are actually very uh, pretty familiar with. Um, so usually we would break it down into a microcytic, a normocytic, or microcytic picture. Mm. So just bear in mind that anemia can either come out as a form of uh, symptomatic anemia where a patient has symptoms and clinical history is supportive of anemia, or it could sometimes be a referral from, let's say, a general practitioner um, with, let's say, blood test results uh, showing anemia with or without the uh, MCV to suggest whether it's a macro, normal, or microcytic. Um, but anyhow, I, I still find that this is a helpful way to approach things. So for macrocytic, uh, commonly would be B12 folate and some of the other causes would be hypothyroidism, chronic liver disease, as well as chronic ethanol ingestion. And also not, don't forget that in the setting of a, of, of a reticulocyte response to anemia, sometimes the MCV may be borderline high in such instances. For normocytic, it is first important to exclude acute blood loss. Um, then the three uh, group of common causes for normocytic anemia will be that of anemia of chronic disease, uh, hemolytic anemia, which can be broken down to an immune or non-immune mediated uh, cause, as well as uh, marrow dysfunction that can be uh, primary hematological problems, primary marrow problems, or secondary issues. In terms of the microcytic group, uh, iron deficiency anemia is a commonness followed by thalassemia. Uh, and some rare causes like cerebroblastic anemia and lead poisoning uh, should be considered as well. So just uh, to go into some of the specific etiologies, for hemolytic anemias, I find it helpful to differentiate them into whether they are immune or non-immune mediated. For the immune mediated group, um, so I normally try to get transfusion out of the way, and then subsequently I try to think of it uh, in terms of whether it's a connective tissue problem, uh, like lupus, uh, whether it's drug mediated, whether it's due to underlying hematological malignancy, or um, whether it's infection mediated in infections like uh, mycoplasma and some of the uh, herpes viruses like EBV and CMV. For non immune mediated, um, in patients with mechanical valves, uh, this can be due to um, shear on the red blood cells, uh, HUS, TTP, uh, malaria. Uh, as well as hypertension with uh, uh, TMA would be important uh, causes to, to consider. Uh, in terms of marrow dysfunction, I think of it as to whether it's a primary marrow problem. So it could be congenital, such as congenital aplasias, or acquired for um, such as hematologic, hematological malignancies or myelodysplastic syndrome. For secondary causes of marrow dysfunction, this could be due to drugs, so chemotherapy drugs, uh, certain antibiotics, uh, let's say Bactrim, may cause uh, cytopenias. Um, infections as well, uh, and um, some infiltrative disorders uh, like, uh, like lymphoma or malignancy uh, or any form of infiltrative disorder that can uh, replace the marrow. Next will be pernicious anemia. So pernicious anemia is an uh, immune-mediated uh, cause of B12 deficiency, so it's important to look for other autoimmune manifestations that can be associated with thyroid dysfunction, vitiligo, and that can be associated with uh, neurological problems such as uh, subacute combined degeneration of the cord, where there is uh, both posterior column um, deficits as well as peripheral neuropathy. Sideroblastic anemia can once again be congenital or acquired, could be drug induced uh, due to ethanol ingestion or copper deficiency, and lead poisoning may occur in certain uh, exposure groups such as a gasoline exposure, contact with certain battery chemicals, cosmetics, uh, paints, and pigments as well. Uh, next, we talk about easy bruisability and uh, coagulability. So, I, I think of it in terms of a few large groups. The first is connective tissue problems, second, it's whether it's a platelet problem, and thirdly, it's whether it's a coagulation problem. So connective tissue disorders can be classified into congenital or acquired. Congenital causes would include things like Marfan's, uh, Ellis Dunlos, as well as uh, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. That's an important cause for PACER Station 5. Acquired causes would include conditions like Cushing's, uh, Hinoctronal Impopura, as well as uh, other uh, vasculitis. In terms of platelet problems, this can be classified into whether it's a uh, a qualitative problem where there is dysfunction of the platelet. So this could be due to patients on antiplatelet agents, due to uremia, uh, as well as uh, von Willebrand's disease. Um, 
there, then the other group would be when there's a quantitative defect, actual thrombocytopenia when there's a drop in the platelet counts. For coagulation-wise, um, PT uh, is, uh, is indicative of the extrinsic pathway and commonly affected by warfarin or vitamin K deficiency and sometimes in early liver disease. For APTT, which is the intrinsic pathway, um, by and large classes, uh, it can be classified into whether it's a factor deficiency or whether there's presence of inhibitors. So factor, factor deficiencies could be due to hemophilia, bone-relevant disease also, there's a relative factor A deficiency. Um, in terms of inhibitors-wise, commonly would be uh, antiphospholipid syndrome uh, antibodies, uh, which would, in terms of clinical presentation-wise, actually present with a pro- or hypercoagulable state. Um, acquired inhibitors can occur in the context of uh, an idiopathic fashion, autoimmune disease or malignancy. Uh, and if patients are on a heparin or factor 10A inhibitors, uh, the APTT assay can be affected uh, too. So things that prolong both would be uh, conditions that uh, affect the common pathway uh, where, where um, fibrin is um, uh, implicated. So DIC, right, which can be due to sepsis, polytrauma, and importantly from the hematology point of view, uh, acute promyelocytic leukemia. Uh, advanced liver disease also can affect both the PT as well as APTT. In patients with a normal platelet count and coagulation screen, uh, but is pre presenting with a, what seems like a systemic uh, coagulable, coagulable problem, um, one should think of factor 13 deficiency, uh, as well as a platelet dysfunction in connective tissue disease uh, diseases. Of note, uh, factor 13 deficiency um, tends to present with a delayed bleeding, and the, delayed, and the bleeding can actually be um, significant. Uh, bleeds rather than just um, epithelial bleeding that we tend to see in uh, platelet dysfunction. So talking about thrombocytopenia, um, so I think one way to think of it is in terms of uh, whether it's a problem with, uh, with uh, synthesis, whether it's a problem with uh, sequestration, uh, or whether there's increased platelet breakdown. Um, but I find it a bit more helpful to think of it from an etiological point of view. So I think about common things, common first, so infections, whether it's viral infections, of note dengue, retroviral, uh, would be important causes. Uh, other infections indicated in thrombocytopenia would be HUS, TTP, that can happen in some of the E. coli strains and some of the hepatitis infections too. Then I think of a connective tissue inflammatory disorders like lupus, uh, Sjogren's, antiphospholipid syndrome that can also be associated by immune-mediated thrombocytopenia. Uh, malignancies too. So if there is uh, marrow problems, this can be thrombocytopenia associated uh, with some other uh, cytopenias too. So certain drugs like heparin can cause uh, HIT, um, chemotherapy agents, sodium valproate uh, for AEDs as well as uh, certain antibiotics can also cause platelet counts to drop. Um, then when we talk about primary hematological disorders, uh, myelodysplasia in the appropriate patient demographic context would be an important differential. Uh, one women's disease does normally cause an uh, actual drop in the cell count, uh, and of course, uh, ITP, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, um, which, is, uh, which can either be primary or really um, secondary to conditions like HIV, Hep C, and lupus. Um, the next common group would be uh, sequestration due to splenomegaly, and we often see this in the context of uh, chronic liver disease. And finally, consumption uh, in DIC, where a patient is not just bleeding from low platelets, uh, but also um, implication of the uh, coagulation pathways. So next, we talk about hypercoagulable states. Um, so beyond the um, either inherited or acquired thrombophilias like uh, antiphospholipid syndrome, uh, factor V laden mutation, protein CS deficiencies, and antithrombin 3 deficiencies, I think there are other um, important medical conditions to think about. So first would be malignancies. This can be just due to solid organ tumors that can uh, in itself cause a hypercoagulable state. But also importantly to remember, it be hematological malignancy. So uh, in the context of leukemias, uh, polycythemia, rubavirus, this can cause a hyperviscosity syndrome that could inherently cause a hypercoagulation. A nephrotic syndrome also is a predisposition, predisposition to clotting. Uh, iatrogenic causes would include medications like OCP use, uh, surgery. Uh, vasculitis also causes um, a, a break in terms of the endothelial uh, structures and therefore predisposes to, to clotting also. And uh, of course, in patients with uh, hyperlipidemia or hypercholesterolemia, there will be increased risk for arteriosclerosis that can then form uh, um, thrombus over time. 
And uh, in terms of local factors, uh, one can think of it in terms of, um, let's say, in the context of uh, atrial fibrillation, where there is local stasis in the heart. This can result in clots forming and um, migrating to other areas. In the context of uh, DVT, uh, prolonged immobility, especially of the um, lower extremities, uh, would be a predisposing factor. So just to add on specifically for young stroke, apart from the hypercoagulable states, uh, it's important to look for cardiac causes, so atrial fibrillation, um, if there is a uh, PFO, a uh, patent form an ovale, this can result in paradoxical emboli, uh, and um, also uh, vascular causes, so Moya Moya's disease, uh, arterial dissections can also present with a very stroke-like picture, and certain metabolic causes um, that are rarer, but I think it's important to be cognizant of. I uh, just wanted to have a quick word on epistaxis. So, of course, apart from ruling out uh, general coagula coagula uh, coagulopathies uh, and nasopharyngeal carcinoma, for the patient's context, remember HHT as well as uh, wetness. Uh, and finally, for polycythemia or high hemoglobin levels, I think of it whether it's a primary problem. So, whether it's, uh, so this is uh, polycythemia rubavera or congenital met hemoglobinemia, which is not common. Um, or whether it's secondary. So secondary can either be due to an appropriate stimulus, so such as in hypoxia, chronic uh, pulmonary diseases, right to left shunts, OSA, um, high attitude, CO poisoning, or um, smoking. Um, this is uh, an appropriate uh, response in terms of uh, increased erythrocytosis due to the relative hypoxemia. Um, or whether it's autonomous uh, EPO production. So this happens in in certain malignancies like uh, RCC, HCC, as well as uh, pheochromocytoma. So in those instances, there isn't really an uh, appropriate stimulus. It's sort of uh, an autonomous EPO production causing the polycythemia. So I hope you found the, um, the various approaches helpful. Thank you.